Welcome to launch your school year with spaces. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited for today. This is our third video in the Spaces Summer Series. Say that three times quickly. And I am excited to have Melody with us today. Who am I, you may say? I am Dr. Desiree Alexander. I am the founder CEO of Educator Alexander Consulting. These are all of the different ways that you can contact me, and I really enjoy putting these webinars on and hosting them. I will say that if you're not with us live, you do not get the certificate, but you do get the knowledge. But if you look right under the video in the details, you will have the link for the resources for today. So everybody gets a resource, you get a resource, and you get a resource. Okay, so what is next? Well, next Friday, we have the last, tier, 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 the last in the Spaces series, but don't worry, they're coming back in the fall. But in the last in the Spaces series, so do understand that you do have to register for each and every one. So if you're like, oh, I liked all of them, make sure that you register for the last one, which is next Friday. Then we have Virtual DLC from SciFair. That is this week. July 26th and 27th, you're so lucky that it's virtual. I mean, look at these presenters all, like, come on now. Virtual and free, so make sure that you go there. They have all the information on the website about how you can attend. Check it out, and I am presenting there too. Yay, I'm happy. Then we have Immerse Students and Learning in August. So coming, learning about AR and VR and XR and all the R's so we can know how to kind of take our technology to the next level, right? Then we have creating follow-ups with Formule. Now, this is one I use Autocrat to like send out your certificates after the webinar and things like that. But I want to be able to send out an email without it having an attachment. And that's where Formule is going to come, like send those automated emails. I cannot wait to learn about Formula. I went to Catherine and was like, please come teach this. So, so happy that that is going to be there. Then I told you, I told you they were coming back. Start the year off right with parents. So I focus on using parents and space, well, using spaces with parents. Um, on September 10th, Melody's going to come back. Love, love, love. And then we have AI in education. I don't know. Are the, are the computers going to take us over? We don't know. Come find out. Then we have increasing your ed tech footprint and influence. So if you're like, hey, I really want to kind of do what you do. I want to you know, I take all of this awesome stuff that I do in the classroom and I do at my school and I want to share it, but I also want people to listen and take it. So come find out how to do that. Then we have TCCA, one of my all-time favorite conferences. I say this every year and it's true every year. Um, it's in Houston, Texas, and it's completely free, about 3,000, 4,000 educators. Um, all in one spot. It's just a really, really fun time. So uh, definitely, and just like a laid back, just come and learn kind of time. So check that out. And then we have special education and beyond. And I just feel like every, this should be mandatory for every educator, right? I don't care what you do. We all need to make sure that all of our students are getting what they need. So love, love, love in October. And then we have three, three tools with endless possibilities. What are the possibilities? I don't know. What are the twos? I don't know, but we will find out from Rochelle in November. And then we always have our self-paced online classes. So yay, make sure that you come and see if you want to do test prep for the educational leadership test or Google certifications test prep. There you go. And we do have one webinar that just came out and it's all about organizing your projects. So that will be done by and you can find it on the same website at alex.net slash events and it's in november so if you're interested in like just how do i get organized as i have all these all these things coming up our projects at school i have you know i want to i want to put on a webinar just whatever it's all about just being organized and organizing your projects so there you go you can find that on the website as well so you have come here to hear about how to launch this school year, right? I want to start strong, how to launch this school year with spaces. Hey, everyone. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my name is Melody McAllister, and Dr. Alexander, you are 
hilarious. You're such a good. So I'm in Alaska and um, I got up around 430 because I can't sleep. Like I knew this was coming. And so uh, I, I had to get up early and um, I'm so excited. I haven't had any coffee. I do have some cherry Coke, but I didn't want to wake my kids up or anything. I do have five of them. They'll probably burst through the door because that's how it goes. Um, I did ask my husband to please help me with that. Um, but I'm just so excited. And Dr. Desiree Alexander, you are um, the best way to wake up. All right. Like you are hilarious. Um, I know that everybody learns differently. So I just wanted to put the bit.ly down here. If you want to actually have this, you know, on your screen, uh, um, I created this slide deck for you. I want everybody to have it to go bit.ly slash launch with spaces because I pretty much made um, just this whole entire presentation a a resource guide so that you would have everything you needed to launch your school year um, well. And so today, basically, we're just going to kind of like set up the spaces and, um, you know, have some things in mind that we want to do with it. And you can definitely follow me on Twitter. I would love that I follow back educators um, and, and sometimes non-educators. It depends on, you know, if you're, you know, what it is you like uh, or what is you put out there. But anyway, so a little bit, a bit about me. I am, my husband and I, we actually moved to Alaska um, a little over three years ago from the Dallas, Texas area. We have five children together. I started teaching in 2004. And since I moved to Alaska, I've actually um, homeschooled my five kids and they range from preschool to seventh grade and we use spaces. Um, and this coming year, two of my kids are going into middle school. So they're actually going um, to a, a, a charter school that's amazing. It's called Stream, but it's affiliated with the Anchorage School District. And I don't know about the elementary kid. Um, I don't know. So we're kind of thinking maybe we'll put them in the school system. Um, I actually was going to teach in Anchorage and, and pursue that until COVID hit. And the craziest thing about life is that, you know, we had just come from some major health problems in um, Texas. So when COVID hit, I just wasn't ready to put myself and my five kids into the school system, not knowing, um, you know, what would happen with our health. We had some difficulties with that before we moved. And I started working with small businesses like EduMatch Publishing, Alice Keeler, um, and, and even Rochelle Danae Poth and just a few others. And I started doing all this online stuff and Spaces picked me up um, in December, I believe. So I've been almost, it's over a half year with Spaces, but I'm like, it's crazy because I help build community online and I just love community. I loved building it in my classroom as an educator. I love building it with my own children, which is kind of funny. Um, but and so this is something that I absolutely love. I still get to work with educators. I have learned how to, you know, navigate social media very well. So definitely give me a follow, give Spaces a follow. I'm going to be on the other side of Spaces. Usually if you tag um, us on Twitter or uh, uh, Instagram, I'm usually the person taking care of all of that. And if you want to, you know, follow me on Facebook, please do. I, I try to put out, con listen, we are whole people. If you go to my Facebook page, you're going to get education. You're going to get makeup. You're going to get um, stupid memes that make you laugh, parenting hacks, like whatever. So, but I would love for you to stay in touch. And um, I'm also the author of the I'm Sorry Story through EduMatch Publishing. And I'm actually in the process of writing I'm Sorry Too. I'm sorry to get it. I love a good pun. And um, if you tweet me out today, um, whether you use MJ McCallie writes or spaces underscore edu, I, I probably will send you a book. If you'd like an autographed copy of the I'm sorry story, I would love to send you a book if you want to give me a shout out. Um, but yeah, and I actually created a lesson plan and I'll probably share that next week when we start talking about how to explore spaces with reading. But this is just a little bit about me. Um, I, uh, I just want to stay in touch with you. I love building relationships. And so, oh, and I am a Scorpio. And I, if you notice the kind of like the 80s, 90s theme, I try to infuse that in everything I do to make it a little bit more fun. Um, and, I, and I just naturally put the 80s in everything. And I really am a Scorpio. But I use my Scorpio for good is all I'm going to say, if you know what Scorpios are like. <laughs> And also, if you have a question, like, it's so weird to talk to myself. So if you actually, you know, want to unmute, I don't know, Dr. Desiree, is that okay if they unmute and want to comment or have a question? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because, um, yes, I, I know that I could learn just as much from y'all as you could learn from me. So please know 
that I'm totally okay with questions or comments, or maybe you have a good idea that you'd like to share with everybody. I love all of that. And um, Dr. Desiree, you can stop me at any time if somebody has a really cool idea that they wanna share or a good question. So before we go into this, I don't know if you were at the previous two um, webinars where my colleague, Dean Ganey, he's a power user with Spaces in Florida, and I've known him for years, but actually got to meet him in person for the first time at FETC um, this earlier this year. And so he actually got to talk about like what he does in the classroom and how he uses Spaces. And I think he got really deep last week about how he uses his different apps. We're going to touch on some of that, but we're not going to go as deep into it and, you know, um, Dr. Desiree put all of this on a website, so all of his resources are there. But today I really wanna focus on like getting your classroom started. But why spaces? If you haven't been to anything or heard anything about spaces, the reason that I truly love spaces, and you know, I had a lot of accounts before I started to work for spaces. The reason that I actually thought this might be a good uh, uh, business to work for is because I love their model. They're totally about growth over grades. So. I love ed tech when it actually benefits. I don't like just love all ed tech. I don't think that all ed tech is created equally. And I certainly don't use it all. I am very choosy about what I use. Um, you know, some of the most popular ed tech platforms I, I don't really care for. If they make students feel less than, or if they feel like you have to hurry, hurry, I don't like that. I want to um, use ed tech with my students that I feel will lift them and validate them and, and share in that process. And also just all of these different aspects, whether it's digital citizenship, which is so important. I just, you know, we were at ISTE a few weeks ago and um, just people in my life that are super huge in digital citizenship. We've, you know, this is a great tool for that. Um, you know, Dr. Desiree and I have worked on a few panels together talking about DEI. Um, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I feel like, you know, spaces is something that can help every learner. But if you see on that little board, student and family engagement, like it's when, when I'm teaching and my students come through my door, I never felt like it was just my students that was part of my classroom community. It was also their, you know, their, their parents or their guardians, their younger siblings or older siblings. And I was so blessed to teach a lot of um, siblings, you know, groups throughout the years. And so if I use an ed tech tool, I need it to enhance that. I need to be able to work as a team with the family involved with my students. It's user friendly. You know, um, I've worked with some ed tech that just felt like you had to have a manual and it just, it, it just slowed down. Like I didn't use it as much because it wasn't user friendly. So that was another very important part of why I chose to use spaces and work for spaces. And of course, um, I did a presentation about the whole child with Dr. Desiree a few months ago. And I totally believe that this platform celebrates students, whether, and I say whole child, but you know, you might be a secondary teacher, like the whole student, you know, students come into our doors and they are people and they have gifts and strengths. And I feel like this allows for those strengths and those gifts to take place. And that excites me. Um, that is something that I've actually embraced whenever I do these webinars or what, if I'm speaking um, at a conference, I just, I, I, that's why I get a little bit wild because we are whole people. I am not just an educator. I'm not just an author. I'm not just a mom. I'm not just a wife. Like all of these different facets of our life make us who we are and our students are the same. And I love how this embraces um, our students in that way. Um, you know, another thing is all the buzzwords. I feel like when we talk about differentiation and some of the dreaded words, rigor, you know, this puts all of that into action. You know, if you're not sure how to put these into action, you know, the more familiar you get with this platform, you'll see. Um, of course, I'm always available to help if you reach out to me. Um, and just, you know, social emotional learning, again, everything goes with this. And um, the feedback loop that we know is so important that actually fuels deeper learning is something that we can use with spaces that it's just an incredible feature. And then of course, reflection, which I think is probably the best way to help students, um, you know, that learning stick in their brains. And, you know, if you are on this and it's bit.ly slash launch with spaces, if you click on some of these pictures, oh, nope, that wasn't what I wanted it to have. Um, this, well, let me get, there we go. So if you wanted to actually find this app, you can just click on that little icon and it'll take you to the app. I do use spaces on uh, my phone when I'm with my kids and I upload a lot of their stuff and they also use it on their Chromebook. So, all right, so that is there and I just wanted to make you aware of that. 
All right, and we will move on. Go through the door. So today we're going to talk about the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get started. We're going to get signed up. Then we're going to talk about the first post. Um, and then I love music. So I wanted to share just a few songs um, that you could possibly start with. Uh, you might actually have songs to share with us. So that would be amazing. We'll talk about some activities and assessments, which, um, you know, at Spaces, we pride ourselves on being an authentic assessment when we truly want to know how a student grows over time, um, being able to upload learning artifacts and show that growth over time when you meet with parents, when you meet with your students, you know, you have it right there on um, your app and you can just pull it all up. So it's amazing. Um, I'm going to show you how to upload standards. And then I have some bonus features I wanted to share. Um, but that's what we're going to do today. And if you notice, I have links on all of this. So like this one, if you click on it, goes to the videos of how to get started. We have a YouTube channel. So um, just if you use this as your resource, and I also included all these resources with Dr. Desiree. So she's got it all there too. But I thought even if you just had this presentation alone, you're going to have so many links and resources that go with it. And so yeah, all of these are hyperlinked and I love that. All right. So the first thing, is if you haven't gotten started with spaces, this, uh, whatever, what are these googly things called? <laughs> QR codes. You go, <laughs> I'm sorry. You can go to spaces.edu.com and sign up for your free teacher account. You can use the QR code. And we actually are coming out with QR codes uh, this fall. So before school starts back up, if you wanna get QR codes for your students, you can do that. But I learned a really nifty trick. So, um, I love this. And I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go ahead and click on our homepage. And I love this. I learned this at ISTE. Um, if you click, wait, is this what you click on? Um, yeah. If you click on this little thing, you can create your own QR code. Isn't that so cool? So watch this. Then you have, that is so cool. So this QR code will literally take you. I just think that's crazy awesome. So I, I, I thought I would share that because it's actually saved me from doing a, a, like having to make all these QR codes and going to different sites. I just thought that was so exciting. <laughs> but if you wanna sign up, go yeah, just sign up for your free teacher account and then put your email in. I already have everything y'all. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put, um, oh, I'm gonna show like the actual, uh, and then you just put, I'm a teacher. And then it just, it's just like, you know, kind of Google Classroom in that way. And then I usually, I like to sign up with Google. Honestly, it's the easiest way. And I am a teacher and a student with this account, which is kind of cool. Oh, this is, so this is my, um, yeah. So this is where I'm a teacher account and all of that will pull up. Oh, and there it goes. Yeah, okay. So if you want to do that, I just kind of want to take a minute. Um, you don't have to sign up today, but I just thought if you actually want to sign, a lot of times I, I make classes and then you join and then you like become my student. But today I'd actually, I'd actually like you to just to take a minute, you know, how like when um, back to school starts and all we really want to do is be in our classrooms and put our classrooms together. And, but we have to go to all these meetings. Right. And so today I just thought, you know, what if you just begin your account and start it to explore it? I could tell you the crazy amount of features that it has, but what does that matter? Like getting started with a tool is the first place that you start learning. When you see what it can do a little by little, that's how you learn how to navigate it and do what you want. So that's what we're just focusing on today, getting those first posts up, getting started, getting your account. So I'd love for you to do that if you feel comfortable. Um, otherwise you can just go to spaces.edu.com and, um, you know, just look at our resources. We have a ton of resources on there. And if you don't want to sign up for it, you can at least see what we're about. We have a really great web page. I, I work with the people who create it. So <laughs> give them a shout out. Do we have any questions so far? I'm going to look at the chat. None so far. They did want you to show where to get the QR code again. Okay, great. You know what? Okay. I love that. Yes. Okay. When I pull up the chat, can you see it? No. Okay. I always wondered about that. Um, so, okay, here we go. I'm going to go to spaces. Um, wait, no, I'm going to go to the, I'll go to the actual website. Okay. So do you see how this little button, it's the share button, right? So it says share this page. 
And you can do this with anything. And it is brilliant. Somebody at ISTE showed this to me. And then you either copy the link, send to your devices, create a QR code. Is that not the coolest thing? And obviously you could share the link to your different socials too. But I just think that is so cool. So if nothing else you get today, learn how to like share a QR code. And like, Previous to knowing this, I had to go to like these QR websites and like get the free accounts because I didn't want to spend so much money. You know, um, I would like, I think I've got like three different accounts, but anyway, <laughs> it's terrible. So now I hope that answered your question. All right. So once you get your class set up, you, you want to have your first feed, your, your first post in your class feed, not your first feed. That sounds crazy. Um, and so I created something uh, that everything is linked. So I created, oh my gosh, I, I should have, I should have prefaced this. I am a Canva lover. I have friends that use Buncee. I have friends that use Adobe and I like Adobe Spark. What do they call Adobe now? I feel like it changed. Is it Adobe Spark? I can't remember. And I've used it and I really like those um, platforms, but for some reason, Canva and me, I just, oh, I just love it so much. Um, so in the resources, I've actually created templates for everything that I use so that you can use it as well. So I just thought, here's a simple little collage. When you get to your class, and I'll show the one that I actually have, you're gonna have like this place to create a post, okay? And it's, it's very easy, but thinking about what do we actually want to put as our first post? And for me, community is so important that something that I want all my students to know is that, hey, I'm a human being and um, you, know, you may see me outside of school. I, I want you to know that faith is really important to me. Most of my students, they, weren't, they didn't always have the same faith as I had, but their faith was just as important to them and their family. So I wanted them to know that. Um, you know, um, my family is so important. My kids went to the school that I taught at. So I wanted them to know that these are my kids. I love them. And um, I'm sure that, you know, your parents love you as well. And of course, I put a few things in there. I love the Kansas City Royals. I love writing. I love makeup and hair. These are just things that I care about. How about you? And I know that I could have made this even more detailed, but, you know, <clears throat> for the sake of time, I really didn't. But I thought this could be something that my students could also replicate if they wanted to. Now, the cool thing about spaces is if they wanted to actually draw on a paper or like, you know, the old school collage, cutting out, you know, pictures and then gluing them onto a page, they can upload those as well. You could do that. If you don't want to stick with Canva, you can make your own collage, like your old school, they call that OG collages. And um, you could upload that. And that could be an activity that you do with your um, students, like within the first week of school. And I thought that would be a great first post. Now you may be thinking, well, I want them to know my rules and expectations. That's my first post. And, and, and to, if you want that, great. But here's the thing. The students that are probably going to be using this have probably been in school for a few years. I'm pretty sure that they know most of the school rules or they know how to behave in class. For the students that don't really know how to behave, they don't care if you put your rules in there um, at all. Like that doesn't do anything for them because they're not going to follow them anyway. They're, you know, like that relationship is actually what's going to help your students care about anything that you put in here, but especially your class rules or expectations. So I really want to say and challenge you to put something in there that models that you're a whole person and that you care about them as whole students, whole children, whatever, whole human beings as well. And then you can, when you upload, you know, I want to get to know you. And, and I don't even mind if you want to use these words, except if it puts my name in there, make sure that you put your own name. But I want to get to know you. I listed my five most important things and I want to know about yours. You can create a collage virtually or upload a picture of one that you create OG style. Let me know the five most important priorities you have in life. And I actually thought that this was a little bit better too than, hey, what did you do over the summer? Or things like that, because not all of our students really do a lot over the summer. Or maybe summer was really crappy for them because for whatever reason, there's a wide variety of reasons that the summertime might have not been a great experience for our students. But usually, you know, we have things that we really care about. So I think this is a great way to get to know students. If you click on this, it's going to take you to the template. 
And you can change this up completely how you want it. So not only am I helping you to kind of create that amazing first post, you can change this up any way you want by clicking on um, that feature. And, and this is what I try to do with this presentation. So it's, yeah, so I hope that helps you and helps take away any sort of like, um, you know, pain that you think I can't create something like that. That's why I use Canva because Canva has always helped me to feel like I can create anything, okay? And once you get to that template, you can change up um, everything, colors, uh, you know, any anything and everything about this. It doesn't even have to look like what I put on there. Mine's pretty simple. You can make yours amazing. And so how did she do that? I try to put this throughout the, um, the presentation. How do you create a teacher post? So like if, you know, two or three weeks or two months from now, you're using this, you're like, I can't remember how to. I try to put all the resources here. We're so wonderful about helping to go through all the steps, okay? But I'm actually going to show you, I'll go to my spaces classroom. You go and you, you go to the post. It's very, to me, user-friendly. Um, there's so many ways that you could post. This kind of reminds me, maybe you don't want to upload a collage. Maybe you actually want to take a picture of yourself, add some audio, or use the camera and create a video of yourself. You could do that inside. It's not going to let me use the, um, the video feature right now because I'm on Zoom. Um, but I want, will it? Maybe it will. No, I didn't think it would. So you, but you can actually create a video inside of the platform. You don't have to take a video on your phone and then upload it, which you could do, but you know, um, or you could take a photo and it will be all right there. Um, and then just, yeah. Oh, you know what? Maybe I can just take a picture right now. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I took a picture. I, okay. I don't like that. I'm going to trash that. That was terrible. I need to yeah, smile. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I like that. That's all good. So I'll use it. So maybe your first post will be a picture or something. And I really think the audio feature is so wonderful because not all of our students are on grade level reading or can even read. They may be the most brilliant students you've ever had, but reading is just something they struggle with. So using that audio, I don't. Okay, so like, hey, everybody, it's so great to see you. I'm so glad that you're back. I hope that you had a wonderful summer, but it's okay if you didn't because sometimes things go wrong, but I'm just glad you're here now. Uh, my name is Mrs. McAllister, um, but you can call me Mrs. Mac. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Um, something like that, use it and then give it a welcome back to school. And then you can just type more. Um, it's so funny because I actually have, this is a real class that I use. And I was, I, I forgot, I was going to try to use another class um, with like adult people in here. But the co-teacher that's affiliated with this class is probably going to be like, why is she doing this? So I'm probably going to get some funny messages. But then just post your description. So everything that you said, you can type. Um, I'm not going to do that for time's sake, but I'm so glad you are here. Melody. But you can call me Mrs. Mac or Mrs. M. And you know, you may you may not have that like relaxed. Um, I'm very relaxed with all that. And I respect people that are different than me. You just whatever you want them to call you, you know. Um, I actually would like them to call me Mrs. Melody. If that were, you know, acceptable, I would I would be okay with that. Go ahead, Stephanie. Okay, I've signed up with a first gentleman, but I, I'm looking at my spaces. Doesn't mean I have an account because I'm looking at all these names of people I don't know. Oh, maybe it joined, maybe you joined my class. Maybe my QR code, I added the wrong QR code. No, I signed up for the first man that did this presentation, and I'm like, did I sign up for my own spaces? Did you sign up as a know. teacher? I didn't oh. sign up. I, he just gave us his. Yeah, you we'll signed sign up down. for a. Oh, you're talking about in Dean. the group. She's in. Yeah, she's in Dean's spaces group. Okay, so okay. So I have to sign up yet. So you can actually, if you're a student in Dean's class, you can actually also sign up as a teacher, and then you can toggle back and forth. And I'll show you that in just a second. But that's a good question. So anyway, uh, Steph 
Stephanie, I will, I will definitely come back to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so anyway, I, I would write more here, but I'm going to just for time's sake, just make this, you know, this could be an example of your first post. Okay. Um, McAllister Academy. Next. You know, um, you don't have to do all students. You can, and this is again, differentiation. So, but whatever you want to do. And then this is just, I'm just showing you to see, show you how posts, how easy it is to post. And you know what I forgot to say, you can add up to 10 different types of media in your post, okay? So that's another amazing thing. I don't know if you saw that when I was creating the post, but if you have like this whole thing that you want to welcome your students back, you have whatever you want to do for your first post. You can bring up your um, your collage that you made right here. You can um, you can make a video or a photo and do it. And you know what? It'll let me edit. I'm going to edit this, and I just so I can show you. But it will actually let you um, add up to ten things of media. And if like you want to add a website, you just click on the URL. I put it in there if you want to get into your G drive or your OneDrive or you have a file, or even if you want to pull up a picture, usually do the file, then you can pull it up from your computer. That's how I do it. So it's just so easy. Um, that's what I wanted to showcase this for your first post. And honestly, if, if you are at summer break right now, you're not going to have your students to add. So just working on your first post is good. Maybe you, two weeks later, you're like, wait a minute, this is a crappy first post. You can just delete it, okay? And I'm actually going to delete this because to show you how easy it is to delete. And, um, okay. Yes, I want you to delete this post. Before that, my co-teacher on this says, Melody, why are you doing all this? Um, but anyway, so this is this could be your post. And if you notice the standards, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But I actually tagged. Um, I brought up the ISTE standards because I love the ISTE standards. We did a whole thing about this at ISTE. I think they're just so wonderful for every student. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, now, if you are like, wait a minute, um, I, I was with Dean and I did other classes. So you can actually switch account to, you just go to where you are. So Stephanie, this may be what you need to do. Um, but you might have to create a teacher account first. I already have, that's my teacher account. And then this is my student. So you still want to sign up as a teacher, Stephanie. And if you use the same email, you can toggle back and forth. If this is will let me. It's probably going to take a little bit. That's what happens on presentations. But I hope that you saw. Oh, there it is. Okay. And then so these are the, these are the classes that I'm actually a student. Okay. And again, um, Stephanie, anybody? Oh, look, and I'm in CLIMB. So I don't know if that's the same one. Um, but yeah. So and I am going to go back to my teacher account where I am a teacher. But that's a really good thing to know. Okay. Melinda, we have a question. Yes. Will the student see the post even if they join later? Yes. That's a great question. So when they come, and this is, and you know what, there's probably a lot I'm leaving out. This is your class feed, right? So this is where everybody, you're, I, you're looking at the teacher dashboard right now. So it does look a little bit differently for a student, but this is the class feed. And once your students have joined, they will actually um, see all the posts that you have done. That's a great question. And right now we can't pin. This has been my request that we make uh, the ability to pin. I think that's coming up. So if there is a post that you feel is really important, just like on your social media, um, we're going to be able to pin it. Right now we can't pin anything. So, and that's okay. Like, again, you figure out what you want to, your first post to be, your welcome post. Um, you know, students can click on it. That's where it becomes uh, the thing. And, and I would teach I would model this to my students. This is how I want you to respond to it. They can put an emoji with it, you know, after you tag it, and they can add comments in here. And then, um, and, and you might have them explore. Maybe they want to add an audio file. Maybe they want to take a picture and then talk about that picture. Maybe they want to upload something um, with this post. If you have them create a collage, this may be where they add that collage. There's a few ways that you could do this. You could make this just a post in your class where everybody starts uploading 
um, which I think is brilliant as the first post, because there's so many different things that you can get deeper in here. But if you want your students to understand how to use spaces, and as a new user of spaces, you want to get super familiar with it too. Um, this is where students can add their comment, upload their collage, um, and they can add it as a file or URL if they have a link to it. Because you know, our students, maybe they, maybe their collage is a, um, a website they created, <laughs> or maybe it's part of a YouTube, I don't know. But this allows your students to get so creative and you immediately when school starts, get to see how gifted and talented your students are. And you know, I think, I, I, I don't wanna say that you do this as educators, but I think sometimes as educators, we don't allow, um, for the our students to showcase their expertise as much as we should you know i bet y'all do um, but if you're watching this and and somehow this is not something that's a part of your practice yet you know allowing your students to show their expertise what they already that they already know how to do it is just going to make your teaching and your pedagogy and your content um, sharing and facilitating so much deeper, so much richer, because you're going to draw on those strengths, and you're going to be able to create, you know, um, you know, classwork or school. You know, I'm not really a big thing of homework, but whatever. You're going to be able to create lessons, facilitate lessons that really hone in to what they're able to contribute. So that may actually transform how you teach your students, and you're getting this all in the very first week of school with them. You know, so I, I I'm so excited about this because I just think. You know, once they start uploading this, then you can show and model that digital citizenship, how they comment. You want them to comment to you, but you also want them to comment on each other's things. Let's say a student is not very nice on somebody's post, on their comment. That is a great opportunity to start talking about digital citizenship. And while this looks like social media, it's not social media. So there's that safe and secure factor that nobody else in the world is going to see this but you and your students. But this is something that we see all the time in the world around us, how people are cruel and they write mean things. And of course, I wrote the I'm sorry story, right? So this allows for you to talk about how to take ownership for the things that their students have done that hurt others and to make it right. And also how we don't want this to be, you know, showcased to the world and our digital media uh, footprint, right? Or our social media footprint. This is not something that we want people to recognize us for the, the mean things that we say to others, right? So even using mistakes as learning tools is a great way to show digital citizenship in all of this. Um, and, I, and I will just say that I did tag this and I'll show you how to tag a little bit later on, but I think it's also um, a great way to um, like introduce some of these standards in a way that makes sense. Oh. Melanie, do we have a question? Go How ahead. do students join your class post? And everyone, if you have a question, just raise your hand instead of hopping on the mic so that way we can just stay organized. So how do students join your class post? All right. So one of, that's a great question. So if you look up here on your teacher dashboard, you have feed, activities, spaces, messages and people. So the first thing that you're actually going to do is you're going to, now, because this is free, um, you're actually gonna have to manually do this. If you only have a free account, you're gonna have to manually put them in. If your district adopted this, we would do all of that hard work for you, but it's not really that hard, but we would take all of that out for you. So when you invite students, you are just going to click. It's a lot like, um, it's a lot like uh, Google Classroom in that you have a link that you can share with them. You have a class code you could share with them. I really just wanted to see something. Or look, we are coming out with QR codes for this next school year, but look at this. I don't even feel like we need to because there's your, there's your QR code. So like, this is so cool. So if you have the ability to do this, uh, you've created your QR code, boom, it's all there, okay? So that's how you would do it. Now, let's say you want to invite family. So after like, and I try, I, I invited my husband to be a part of this. I would just put his email right here and it would send the invite. And of course we have all these different guides to help you with that. And teachers, okay. I have teachers with here. Um, Dan is probably going to wonder what I am doing because he's going to get notifications. <laughs> 
So I did homeschool through the last three years and we have a facilitating teacher because I go through a school district. So, um, so, and this was a great way to share artifacts because we're responsible um, to share the artifacts of all the different things that we have on our individual learning plans for each student. So that's why I had our facil facilitating teacher on here. So this is where you would invite your family or your students, you go to the people tab, which I think is brilliant because we wanna invite the people. Now, once we have our people invited, we can actually share messages with them, okay? And um, we, can, we can share messages with students and families, family or just the students. And I just wanna say here that I think it's great to include students and families when we are messaging. I used to be class dojo mentor of my school and this was before spaces was ever a thing. Um, and, and, you know, especially as students get older but even for some of our young students, you know, they are more savvy with keeping up with all of this. There may be a language barrier. Um, keeping your students on, you know, knowing what's going on, I, I just think helps you in the long run. So I think that this is a really an important thing to create, like when you're sending messages. Um, but there may be some things that only family, maybe only parents need to know that the students, I understand that too. Or you may just want to send you know, um, messages to your students, okay? So that's where you would send messages, the different spaces, and I'm not going to get deep into this. I'm not going to get deep into this because when you first start, you may not have all of this. Um, I want you to start in the classroom feed, but there are different spaces. You have individual space, and I actually did this wrong, and then you will have a group space. If I had done this correctly, um, I would just have one little thing that says individual space, but but when I started this, I didn't do it very well. Um, and then I have individual spaces. I love this for book chats. Um, oh, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, I don't even want to go into this because I don't want you to feel overwhelmed with all this. There are different spaces. There's individual spaces and group spaces. So um, just to be aware of that. But again, this whole presentation is just to get started. All of that comes as you get deeper into this. And I've talked about that a little bit on a previous webinar I did with Dr. Desiree. So that's there as well. And I'm sure that Dean went in this a couple, um, you know, with the last couple of sessions that he did, but that's all there. And that's what it means. And then of course the activities, let's say that you want to do this collage as an activity. You could actually create it as an activity. Um, I won't go super deep into this, but it's the same type of creation, um, new activity. You would just go through everything that we kind of did. You still have all those creation tools, so you can upload um, if you wanted to, and then you could put it where you wanted to go. Maybe you wanted to go to the class, you know, or you wanted to go to different students. So that is there. But again, I, the reason I'm not really getting deep into that today, I just want you to be aware that it's here because I just want you to be started. I, I won't be there with you when you start really getting deep into spaces, but you have this resource. So I kind of am there, but when I have used resources in the past, like I love Nearpod and Flocabulary, um, I started small and then I went deep. And I just think that that's just the best way to get to know these ed tech tools. And that's kind of where I wanted to head today. Um, any questions before I move on? We have a question from Gail. When should you have students see spaces? First thing in the morning, homework, or when? That is a great question. And um, spaces is good for virtual learning only, you know, exclusively virtual learning. It's good for face-to-face. -face. Maybe you never do virtual thing. Um, it, it's good for every type of classroom and every type of learner. And I, I have personally used it all day long. Um, so it would be cool. I could see how if you wanted them to check in the first thing in the morning, maybe you create like a reflection, an individual space where students share you know, how they're feeling, or you give them the opportunity to say, hey, if you're having a really rough day and you want me to know, um, but you don't want to share it with the rest of the class, you know, you can send a message to me or in your individual space, maybe you create a reflection space just for that. Um, students can share, but really you can use this all day long. You can use it for different subjects. Um, so it depends on how you want to use it. If you just want it to be like a check-in, or um, like if you're, if you're, okay, let's say that you just teach social studies. And so um, you, you want them to check in when they first get in class. Maybe you have that um, question of the day and you want them to like do a little fast, um, you know, 
da -da 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 -da, and send it. That's it. Maybe you want to use it as an exit ticket. So maybe you reserve the last 10 minutes of your class so that you've got an exit ticket already ready to go and they answer it. Um, so it just kind of depends on how you want to use it. And again, remember, how did she do that? Resources are in this presentation. And you know, when you figure out like, how do you want to use this? I mean, basically, I, that's why I wanted to do this, you know, before school started back up for most people was because I think that's kind of something that you have to think about. Um, once you start getting your stuff for the new year, some of you are going to be teaching different subjects, different grade levels. So it, this may be um, a very different type of year for you. Um, you may not know how you want to use it specifically yet. And that's okay. Like changing, you know, making iterations and um, curating different ways. It, it's all a part of this. And I totally forgot about this slide, but I also created, um, so I, I worked with Edgy Notch Publishing for I think almost three years. And um, one of the things that I love to do, especially during women's uh, month is, I can't remember which month that is on the spot, but creating magazine covers, but like, and I put, and I shared this template. So if you didn't want to do a collage, but you wanted your students to create like a magazine cover, I shared this template. I just think it's so cool. And if you're in, into Canva, maybe you're like, uh, you know, you know, maybe you're like really into Canva. There's so many different templates that you could also create. Another thing that I like to do because of my social media, I like to create memes and I like to do quotes and I am obsessed with coffee. Like, I just feel like the world would be a better place if everybody had coffee. So um, this is, I made this a template and it doesn't have to be about coffee. Like if you, if maybe your first post, maybe you want to create a meme and get your, your students creative juices flowing so they can create a meme as well. And again, you can erase everything off of this template. Um, it doesn't have to be about coffee. Or maybe, I, I love Dean, and he shared a lot of quotes in his last two webinars. Maybe you just want them to have a quote. So I put this template in there. And again, it doesn't have to be about coffee. Um, so you may not find these helpful at all. And then, of course, I had how she do that, these resources. And this is the YouTube. So if you're like, how does, how did Melody do all of that? I just want you to know that we have videos, we have every resource available for you um, to create a post within spaces. So if you don't remember how I just did anything, you can either watch this video again or um, click on our YouTube. All right. All right, now, something that I, absolutely love is music. They don't just call me Melody for nothing. <laughs> Actually, I think that um, I think that my mother giving me my name was very divine. Um, she said that she had a song of joy in her heart when she was pregnant with me, even though my birth story is not really the greatest. Um, she was, you know, an un she wasn't married and a lot of people didn't think that she should have me. So um, she felt like she had a song of joy in her heart when she was pregnant with me, even though a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, you know, this was 1980. So you can imagine that there was still a lot of grief given to women at that time. And she just, you know, she's a very spiritual person. And um, she shared with me that um, it didn't matter if people understood or not. She had a song of joy in her heart. That's why my name is Melody Joy. And I love that story. Um, but something that has always been super important to me is just music. And there are some songs that every single one of my students probably know um, since 2004. Lean On Me is one of those songs. And I actually have, if you click on this, it'll take you to the YouTube, Lean On Me. <laughs> and I feel like Mr. Withers just passed away within the last year. I could be wrong. Um, I felt like um, it was really sad. I feel like I was here in Alaska, but my students messaged me um, and they were just like, it was so sad because he had passed on and, um, you know, Lean On Me has always been an important part of my pedagogy. It's a beautiful song. My first graders loved it. My fifth graders loved it. My fourth graders loved it. Um, I'll show a video of my first graders. We did some, we, we opened up the day every day with this song with um, Lean On Me. Um, my first ISTE presentation in 2019, you know, um, we were all singing it together by the end of the presentation, just one of those amazing songs. And um, one of the things that I did with my first graders was, again, we opened every day with that song. 
And so this, this has, maybe you decide you don't want to use spaces. I still think that music is important. Um, you can share these songs in a post, but you can also just make them part of your school year, whether you use spaces with this or not. Having those songs that really just, like if you're having a hard day, something is happening outside in the world that we just can't control. And I'm going to get emotional because um, if you've been living and you know, there's lots of things happening, right? Um, just being culturally relevant with your students is um, something that is super important to me. Another song that I love is um, Shakira's Try Everything um, from Zootopia. And I love that movie. It's probably my number one favorite movie. And my kids love it. My personal children love it. My students love it. And, um, you know, the growth mindset used appropriately, used to invite that whole child and all of their experiences. Because if you don't do that, you're not really celebrating the whole child and you're not using social emotional learning very well. And that, that entails the growth mindset. So I think the growth mindset has its place used well and used appropriately and try everything is one of those songs that we sang the whole year. My fifth graders loved it. My first graders loved it. Um, you know, it talks about making mistakes and learning from that. And I think as adults, you know, being in front of young people, we should embrace that because it's a part of who we are. It's part of how we learn. It's probably the most important part of how we learn, right? So that's a great song too. Um, you know, the first years of my teaching, I was like solely a science teacher. And so anytime I could put, here comes the sun into a presentation, or I loved it. Maybe we're talking about, you know, the solar system. Here comes the sun has always been a fan favorite. I usually used it. I introduced it during a science um, lesson or unit, but I think it's a great song. Oh my gosh. It always seemed like we were talking about that during the winter. Um, and so, you know, it, it's a good way to see the sun or celebrate the warmth of life and the light of life, even in the winter time. And the Pokemon theme song. Oh my gosh. Um, I almost put a video in here of me singing this with my, when my son was in first grade, he's obsessed with the Pokemon theme song. But the Pokemon theme song, and I don't even like Pokemon. I pretend like I do because my kids love it. My personal children love it. My students usually love them too. But the, the theme song is great. I want to be the very best, talking about your personal best, you know. Um, so it's a really good song too if you want to explore it. And even our high schoolers, I'm telling you what, you put this song on, they're going to sing it because it's probably part of their childhood. Um, so again, if you actually click on these, it's going to take you to the YouTubes of these. So don't worry about copying this down. Um, it, it's, that's, that's gross. Um, I'm going to get off of that, but it has like all the links to these. And I would definitely start with Lean On Me, Try Everything. Those are my top two favorites. I have a lot of songs. Another song, I didn't add this. I didn't want to like overwhelm with the playlist, but Toby Max, um, Speak Life is a great song. And even though he is, you know, a Christian artist, he doesn't um, really uh, nothing goes into that and in speak life. And I think that's a great, you know, we sang it, um, We've sang Lean on Me as a class. I feel like we've tr tried everything with my fifth graders when we had fifth grade graduations. And I think Speak Life was another one that we sang as a class during our ceremony. But that was something to help me with my students talk about speaking life to one another, you know, um, because we're all going to be torn down by somebody. I mean, we can't, you know, escape life. We can't escape that if we're living. Um, but we can sure like help each other learn how to speak life into one another. So that was always a theme song I had as well. And again, I tried to pick songs that wouldn't make anybody feel less than or um, that their own values were less than. So that's something I, I think about in my playlist as well. Okay. And I, okay. And I wanted to show you the power of music and you can actually, those URLs that I showed you from the YouTubes, you can put those as a class post and talk about the meaning of the song introduce it to your class that way. Um, some of your students are going to be, maybe maybe they're just not ready to share, open up. I, I had some students open up at the very end of the school year. Um, so we've all had those students that you wonder sometimes, are you doing anything that's reaching them? But this is something that you can share in a class post or an activity and talk about the lyrics, things like that. And I, but, but if you have this presentation, you can check it out my first grader singing. And then this is one of my fifth graders. I know you can't hear it, but I just want you to see the movement. He ended up making his own rap at the end of the year and he shared it with the whole school because that's what the power of music does. If you have this, um, if you have all the links, you'll be able to hear it on your end. So 
and we will move on. Okay, any questions before I move on to activities and assessments? Not right now. Okay. So one of the things that I love about spaces is just the ability to embrace something new, something different, try something different. I never taught the same thing every year. I'm just not one of those people. I never kept worksheets like, okay, there were probably maybe, I'm not a big worksheet person and it's okay if you are, like some of us have some amazing worksheets. I never really did the same thing every year. I would maybe keep like three or four things that really resonated with my students and I would see if they did the next year, but I changed it up. I, I guess the thing that I stayed with the most was the music I would add to my playlist, but the activities that you can do with spaces is just incredible. And so I hyperlink these. So now you can actually go to like when you, you can, um, it'll take you to this and all right. So you can actually go to lesson plans. Um, so you have all these lesson plans. You have these, oh, this is mine. The I'm sorry story. Oh my goodness. And remember, if you tweet any of this out and tag me at MJ McCallie writes or just tag spaces underscore edu, um, you could actually win one of my books. And even, oh, I'm just going to tell you though, I put a video in here. So even if you don't have my book, you can still do the I'm sorry story lesson. I didn't want anybody to feel best left out. But if you want an autograph copy, you might win one from me. I'm just saying. But we've got all of these different lesson plans that you can use with spaces. And you can change them up. Some of them are for you know um, younger grades. Some of them might be for older grades. You just change it up how you want. Um, all of these different lesson plans um, are very explicit. So you won't be lost, okay? And you can always reach out to me if you, for ideas or our community, and I'll talk about that later. But that link that I showed you goes to all of our different things. You're gonna get lots of ideas. Um, and if you, you know, our podcast is great as well as a resource. Um, but some activities and assessments that you may want to try um, is, you know, creating, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want anybody to get mad when I say TikTok. Listen, TikTok is here. I think it's still here anyway. I personally had to delete it off my phone because I got lost in a rabbit hole. So now I do mostly Instagram reels. Okay. But, and maybe this is something, maybe you're like, I don't like TikTok and I don't want to support TikTok. Fine. Okay. Pretend I didn't say TikTok. Or and the reels are just as fun as, but remember when I talked about how our students come with strengths and expertise, this may be the best way to assess a student. And I, I did a podcast um, with a, a, an educator just last week, and we were talking about telling, you know, assessing through storytelling, assessment through storytelling. The best way to figure out what a student knows is, is them talking about it, right? But also the best way to help a student remember or to keep that learning in is, is, is through storytelling. And I just think that some of the, um, the online apps that we have are just like so incredible when you think about how a student wants to share their story. And then when you create that post or they want to upload it, all they have to do is upload their URL. Or maybe they just want to create a little short. Maybe you've got some budding producers, movie producers or actors, and they have a YouTube channel or, you know, whatever, maybe their parents do. Um, or maybe you just want to use that video ability in the spaces um, platform. You don't even have to do all of these outside. They could do all of this in that app. They could just create a little scene and record themselves right in front of their computer as they do it. And some ideas that I wanted to share was a poetry slam. And of course, both Dr. Desiree and I love vocabulary and um, we love all the things that they do. So you could create a song through that um, or, you know, create a poem, the storytelling component, I just um, thought, and the, you know, the, just a, a rap um, these are just so powerful. There's, it's, it's embracing that story element. Um, it's embracing the student as a whole person and bringing in those gifts. And these are the, you know, I know that Dean mentioned this in the last couple of weeks, but that creative element is where the higher order thinking skills are really coming in. And you get to see and showcase um, what they are truly learning. And if, if these are not the assessments um, that just make us thrilled about learning, you know, your students are, are going to embrace this. Now, maybe your students are writers, and so that's another thing. Maybe they don't want to sing or share like that. Maybe they want to write. There's just so much capacity in um, our Spaces platform to do all of that. Um, I will actually talk about the book chat in more detail next week, but so let's say that you create an individual space and you call it book chat. Um, this is where your students 
instead of like doing a reading log, this is where students either choose a cam, they choose a video or audio, or they write about their book. And then the feedback element um, is where you, it's, it's the chat, because it's not just like a book report where they submit it to you, you give to give feedback to it, um, and it becomes a chat. You could also do this as a group, like how if students are reading a, a, like a reading group and they're reading the same book, you could have them chat together and you could chat with them in the group spaces. So these are just things to think about. Um, I have hyperlinked everything. Um, I, I think this goes to my book chat blog. Yes, so um, I have everything about this in here. I also published, um, oh, this is a lesson plan. And I also published a piece with Alice Keeler a few months ago about how to ditch those reading logs, but I am gonna talk about all of that next week. So I hope that you will join us again. But again, like it's up to the students how they want to upload and there's that capability of you chatting with them. And I'm looking at my time. Oh my gosh, it's already a first hour, what? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I was like, oh, surely I'm not gonna take up two hours, but I probably could. Um, and then a self-reflection space. Let's click on this because I can't remember what I put here. Okay, great. <laughs> I love this because this gives you a teacher guide with an amazing amount of, um, it's a slideshow presentation. Okay, here's the handouts, but it gives you all these, um, all these questions to spark reflection. And um, okay, this is the guide. I wanted to get to the questions. Okay, so you this actually gives you podcasts and, and like little tiny bits of it and you can talk about the questions. Um, so this is a really cool resource to have um, as well. And uh, it has times, timestamps and discussion questions. So I wanted to share that resource because it kind of gets you that self-reflection in class. I don't know if you follow Bonnie Nieves. Um, she's an, also a power user of spaces and she's at Biology Goddess, the whole thing spelled out correctly on Twitter. And she is amazing when it comes to self-reflection. She has made that a part of her weekly, um, maybe her daily, but like she teaches science to high schoolers and um, she has them self-reflecting all the time. And of course, because Spaces is a virtual, you know, and it's an app that you can, they can do that self-reflection in class or at home or wherever. And I didn't even say this at the beginning, but like, you know, Spaces is, it, it, it captures that learning wherever your students are. So they may want to self-reflect at home. They may, they, something that they see in the world may resonate with them while they're, you know, at the skate park or, um, you know, somewhere else out in the world. They may be home or somewhere else. And they can just get on that app and um, talk to you in, in those individual spaces. So that's something really cool because we know that learning happens everywhere. Something else they can self-reflect on is that, you know, essential questions that you have um, for your units, you know, your book chats, um, just something that you've done. Maybe, you know, my, my, my science classes were so fun. We did so many different um, labs. So maybe you just want them to reflect on the process, what they would do better the next time. And I used to make my students write everything out like that was the end of their lab. And I would, I would give them like a template. When I say template, I would write, we would as a class talk about it and I would write it out in words so that they could see all of their ideas come and, 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 and make it into something that sounded educated, right? I was giving them a template of how to do this because I knew that they were going to do um, even more um, rigorous labs as they went on to middle school. So I wanted them to have that piece. And I always wanted them to have in the back of their mind that they could do better. Like everything that we do could be improved upon. So that's part of self-reflection and everything I taught, because I didn't always teach just science. Um, I taught, you know, I've taught all subjects and there's always that self-reflection component um, that really helps all of that stick. And you can do that with spaces um, and you can teach that through the class feed. So if you just wanted to stay on that class feed and you didn't want to get into the other spaces because you just weren't comfortable or you just wanted to, to, um, to wait, um, this is something that you could help your students model with your students through that, uh, that, that's, that feed. And I probably need to do an actual, on just a self-reflection, like just do a webinar on self-reflection because it's so deep. But if you, once you get into spaces and you create that self-reflection space where it's the individual, these are individual spaces where just you and your student can see what is going on. You could also talk about world events, um, give them that space to talk about it um, in a way that 
you feel comfortable, they feel comfortable, and also a parking lot for questions. I was an avid trained teacher, or I am an avid trained teacher. And so on my whiteboard, I always had a parking lot, like a poster that said parking lot and had parking spaces. And I would give, you know, sticky notes and my students um, could, maybe I was in a discussion group, um, a small group time, or maybe um, it just wasn't uh, an appropriate time to ask a question. You know, they, they could have been thinking about like, hey, what is, what is lunch? I'm just going to use that because it seems stupid. Um, you know, like, what is lunch today? But I'm teaching math. They could actually write what is lunch and put it on the parking lot paper, you know, that I had the visual thing that I had on my board. And then I would answer that when I, when it was appropriate. So like usually before we were leaving, I would take off those parking lot questions and just answer them. And we didn't have to put names on them or anything like that. So this is just something that you can actually do with spaces. And I love this component because it's, it, it's going to help you. Please keep this as a resource because as you get more familiar with it, you're going to come back to these. These are just kind of springboard ideas to get you into using it a little bit more deeply. But um, it all starts, again, in that class feed where you model, model, model how you want your students to use it. Yeah. And then the assessments, I don't think I clicked on this. I'm just curious, like, what did I attach to this? Okay, great. Um, this podcast with Natalie Vardabasso, um, she, we talked about assessment through story, and I just think that it's a great one. So I put that on the assessment. And that kind of comes with some of the things I've been talking about. Any questions before I move on? Can you show us an example of your parking, parking lot on spaces? I'll try. I wonder if it's on this class. Um, I might have to go to my spaces class to show you a good parking lot. Do not restore pages because you will see way more than you want to see. So, all right, so I am going to log in. And um, thank you for asking this. Okay, and I do believe I created one into the Spring Into Spaces class. And Melody, we're only seeing your Canva. I just oh, want to make sure that we're supposed to be oh my gosh. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay, how do I, I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to reshare, okay? Thank you for saying that. Okay. So this is a spaces class that I created with teachers. So these are all adults. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So this is a self-reflection. Um, I, I made a self-reflection space. And if I go to spaces, okay, so you're going to see the class space, which I want everybody to start in. I want you to get comfortable with that class space. All right. I created individual space. And again, this is where all of my students, I have 150 students um, in this particular class, but everything that is shared in this individual space is only between um, myself and that student. So this is a parking lot resource share. Um, and I, I created this, like when you create an individual space, you get to, and you can edit everything. And I just, I, I said, this is where you make comments or questions that only you want to share with the teachers of this class. Um, so if you have co-teachers on this, they'll be able to see it as well. So even though you see all of your students on the side, um, you only, like this student, um, I think it's Tatiana, I only see what she has shared with me. None of the other students see that. Um, and then this is something that I shared with all of my students, resources, okay? And even though, did anybody comment on that? Nobody commented on that. Um, and I was able to, um, you know, send some messages through that to only like Myra, um, some more resources. So nobody really got involved in this class, I'm going to say, um, and asked me questions, but they could. Um, they could ask me a question about the resources I shared, or they could just um, create a question. So, and, and all I did was, and I'll show you how I did it. You create an individual, okay? And this is one-on-one -on -one with all of your students. And then, well, unless you don't want some students, you get to check. I'm gonna put all students. 
And then this is where you talk about, if you want to call it the parking lot, Okay, and then you talk about what you expect in this parking lot, and then you can talk about the different colors or whatever. I'm not actually gonna follow through with this. You just click save and then it becomes a space because I've already done this, um, but that's the process that you go through. You just hit save. And then all of your students will have this as part of their classroom. Um, again, here's the one that I've already created. And since I have talked about a self-reflection space, again, I just created, you look at those blue buttons, um, I created a space and I called it the self-reflection space. And all of the reflections here are between, so whatever my students say, even though again, I see all of my students, they can only see me. They, um, so like I responded, okay, I, this is, this. I did this as an example. So you're gonna be like, why does Melody see twice? Because this is Melody McAllister, my personal as a student. And I uploaded this. And then me as a teacher, Melody McAllister, I just use this as an example. <laughs> I sh shared feedback. And then I even uploaded um, whatever um, I, I put there. I uploaded different ways to, to show feedback. So yeah, so I hope that helps. This is something that you may not feel comfortable at first doing with your class until you get to know spaces better. And um, that's why I'm not going to go into it too much. But while I'm here, are there any other questions before I leave this space? Not at this time. All right. And also, this is where those little red dots, this is where you get your notifications. You view all like in, in this little um, cog right here. This is where you would um, manage all of that. Okay, I am going to stop share for a second, go back to my original screen share. Okay. Oh, IEP goals. Oh, but um, you're still, are, okay. Are you, um, I, I hate this question, but are you seeing um, my launch into spaces? No, we're not. Okay, are you now? We're seeing activities and assessments. Okay, great, thank you. So you see my slideshow, awesome. Okay, so I kind of went over everything, um, not too deeply or whatever. And um, the next thing I wanna talk about is uploading your standards. You can actually do this before your students come into your classroom. Um, inside of the platform, the Spaces platform, every single state, now, if you're international, but I don't think there was anybody international so far, um, you may not have this internationally, but all the state standards are a part of the platform. And I also wanted to say that if you're into social emotional learning, the CASEL uh, standards are in there and the ISTE standards are in there as well. And so um, I think that's super important. And now I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I think I even hyperlinked it just so that you would, like if you don't wanna do that today, yes. So there is a video that I created there is a video that I created on how to do this, but I'm actually going to show you um, right now. I'm going to, I have a little bit too many links open. I'm so sorry. I want to go back to my spaces class. <laughs> okay. So you're like, before you're, I, I, I have class, you know, kids in here, but let's say before your students come, you want to, here's where your curriculum goals are. You want to go to manage the set. And again, I've already added these. Um, I'm in Alaska, um, but you just go to add curriculum tag sets from there. Um, I've already done like the California, the, um, the, the Texas state standards. I have not done Louisiana. Louis. So I'll choose a Louisiana because I feel like Louisiana is very well represented today. And look, just this state, look at all of these different standards you could upload, okay? right so you decide what is the most appropriate for your class i'm going to go with science just because um you know and i'm going to go with grade five and so then it just shares what they are you know if you wanted to read through it and then you just add set and this really helps you 
Now, do you have to upload your standards? No, you don't. But let's talk about the assessment piece of this. When you're going to show the growth over time in a certain standard, or um, you're going to have that parent conference or your student conference, maybe you're going to have a student conference, uh, being able to tag curriculum is super important, okay? So now, as you can see, we have the Louisiana Science Grade 5 in here, but I also wanted to show you just how easy it is, okay, if you wanted to upload the CAS Castle, it's right there, and I've already added it, so it's already in my um, class, or the ISTE, okay? Um, and I love this, I want to show you this because if you are um, trying to be ISTE certified as an educator, not only do you have the students standards to upload, but you also have educators. And this would be really cool for you if you're trying to document what you're doing to go through that process of becoming ISTE certified. I just wanted to let you know that it's there. So you can actually tag what you're doing with um, these. And I already have them, so I'm not gonna add them again. Um, and so I'm just gonna exit out of here so that I go back to my class. And so, Let's look at this first feed, um, this first post in the class feed. You go to this little tag right here, and this is where you decide what you wanna post. You can see that I've already tagged it with science as inquiry and, pro um, and process. Did I, oh no, I didn't do that. I did it with this. <laughs> I did, I'm, I'm sorry, it was the ISTE is what I, did I go past it? Oh, you know what? I haven't uploaded the ISTE into this classroom. So I'll do the common core. Um, that's what I was doing, or the, the core, the, um, blah, 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 blah. the SEL, and this is from the castle. Um, I haven't uploaded the ISTE. That, that was in other classrooms that I had. So forgive me for lying, but I did. I chose the self-awareness, the ability to accurately recognize one's own emotions. Um, and I think I probably just did I probably could have chosen a better one. You can match up what you're doing. Oh, the social awareness, the ability to take the perspective. I love that one. Um, you just tag uh, whatever like matches with what you're doing. And um, it could be one, it could be three, like I just did. And this is these are not the ones that really I should be um, matching. But anyway, that's how you match them with them. This fall, we're coming out with proficiency, like a proficiency skill. So if you're into competency-based um, or standards-based grading, it's also going to be color-coded. And there's a whole thing coming out this fall. Um, I'm not going to talk about that too much today, but if you're into that, we will um, definitely have to do another webinar on that. But it's all going to be a part of the standards. Um, let's see. So if you don't remember how I did that, just click on how she do that. And it's all there, the curriculum tags, anything that you wanted to know about them. You can add them to activities. Um, that's a new feature that we just started this spring. Um, you can add them to your classes. And um, again, everything you can edit, okay? And how do I add custom? That's something I need to know more about because I haven't actually done that. So I'm gonna go into that next. I mean, personally, to learn more. So, and what did I put here? Upload? Did I make that a movie? Okay, good. And again, if you just want to see me doing it, this is where I actually do upload the ISTE standards. I go through the whole process. I share my screen. And um, obviously, it wasn't for this class. And I also talk about the importance of the ISTE standards um, before we go into that and then actually upload them into my classroom. So um, that is there for you. All right. Melody, before you move on, can you just answer a quick question? Yes. Was it under the feed that you went to upload standards? Not going through the whole thing since you gave us so many resources, but was it under feed that you went to do that? Um, oh my gosh, did I just totally um, take up my class? Um, let me log in really quick. I'm sorry. Um, it was in the class feed, yes. Okay. Uh, it was in the class feed and it was under manage sets. I, the word, I'm not saying it right, manage tag sets, okay? So I'm in the class feed, yes. And right here where it says manage tag sets, that's where you click on it to add them. Mm -hmm. But no matter what space you're in, so I could go to, Uh, my individual space and I could tag, they're all there. They'll be there for every space that you're in. But you wanna get them 
you definitely want to pull them up into your, yeah, in your class feed. Right there, manage tag sets. All right. And I do have that on the video. Now, this is some bonus tracks. Um, you may, what I love about spaces, and especially if you're using this with younger students, but you may even think about this with older students. Like when you have them clicking on a whole bunch of different apps, it can, uh, it just can be confusing. So the thing about spaces is you really don't need all of these apps unless you want to use them. But honestly, because I do love ed tech, that is beautiful. These are my favorite ed tech um, uh, apps. <laughs> um, and I hyperlink this because you add them as the URL component. Now, the vocabulary, I think I, did I go to the YouTube? Okay. I don't know that you can add a vocabulary song. Like if you are not using vocabulary, the paid for version, I don't know that you could upload a song, but I don't know if you know this, but they have their own YouTube page and you could definitely upload the songs from there. And they have them for all different um, ages. So if you go to their YouTube page and it's there, you just have to click on the presentation. Maybe, oh, this is one of my favorites. I'm so glad they added this to their YouTube page. I don't know how you could actually go into the actual vocabulary app into the song. It would have to be a YouTube page one. Um, and then you would just click on that. Um, and Ike is my favorite. He actually, we were actually on CBS this morning in 2017 together. Um, and you would just go to share. Is this whatever? Uh, and you would take the copy it. Okay. And then let's go back to the class. If you wanted to create a post to talk about like three different types of rock, you would um, add it as a URL. Oops. Okay. So there it is. You would give it a title. And then you would yada, 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 put all the things in there. Um, again, you can put up to 10 different types of media files. It'll tell you how many you're using. Um, maybe you didn't just want to put the video in there. Maybe you wanted to say something, um, whatever, just it's up to you. Click on next and um, just put, you know, go through this. And then there it is. And so that's how you would add your favorite um, apps to this. You would just use the URL component to that. Um, if you have any trouble, let me know. I think I did um, add this resource. Okay, great. So this kind of tells you, they specifically um, shared how do you do spaces with YouTube, um, spaces with Flipgrid or Flipnow, um, and just you know different apps that you wanted to use. And honestly, the best thing is to use the URLs. And, um, you know, I love Flip and I love, uh, you know, Flipgrid. I haven't really used Flip yet, but I loved Flipgrid. Um, one of the things to think about, though, is, and I know I've talked with other educators, when you're trying to take your class to the world, I think that Flip is the best thing because you can bring or the world into your class. So you're trying to have that, you know, that relationship, that bond with the world. You're bringing the world into your class or you're even sharing your class with the world with other, um, you know, safe people. <laughs> um, Flip is great. However, you know, within the, the app, you can actually have conversation without even leaving the the Spaces app. So that's one thing to consider. Um, something else that I loved is, is Book Creator. And if you click on all of these different icons, um, you're actually going to be taken to their site. And this is just my way of saying these are awesome apps and probably you're familiar with them as well. Um, but once you have, you know, I loved using Book Creator with all of my students. Once you get that book published, use that URL put it into, um, uh, you know, one of your spaces, whether, whether it's an individual or class space. But another really cool thing you could do um, with Book Creator, this is something I did with my first graders. I just used a different app because, again, spaces wasn't around at the time. Um, but I shared the link with my parents or the families. And so 
we would create a book and usually these books were literally they everybody created a class page for the book and then we bound them together and then like inside of the book creator app i had everybody read their own page um and then we put it all together and then i sent it to their parents and so they could have they could use this as bedtime stories this is what my first graders did but we tried to create a book a week a class book so we had a class library but you could also this is some really cool ways to share with your parents through the messaging, um, through the reflection. There's just so many different things that you could do the more that you get to know the app and the more comfortable you feel. And now we talk about being a, um, a portfolio app because if you use the individual space, every time you upload a learning artifact, you're actually creating a portfolio. For some reason, a lot of us teachers in the United States, we really stay away from the digital portfolio. I mean, there's definitely a group of people that like the digital portfolios and there's a few of us that are like, I don't want that. Like, I don't know if it's the, like, the portfolio part, we're just like, yeah. But actually every time that you upload or your student uploads a learning artifact into their individual space, you're actually creating a portfolio, whether you think you are or not. But let's just say, that your students come in um, or Wakelet is used at your school, again, you just, you can take that portfolio aspect. I really like the portfolio that Wakelet has. Just use the URL from your portfolio and put it in and there you will, you can share that as well. And Nearpod, one thing I wanna say about Nearpod, um, I have used this in my Spaces class, but you have to set the lesson for self-paced. <laughs> Um, if you're doing a Nearpod lesson, like whole class, you don't need spaces. But let's just say that you're assigning um, a lesson using Nearpod. Make sure that you use self-paced when you put that URL, because otherwise I don't see why you would want to um, even add it to spaces. But it's something that they can do on their own time um, or what have you. So, yeah. Any questions about some of my favorite apps? I don't see any at this time. All right. And um, I'm so into this. This has been so fun. I don't even know what's coming next. I'm like, what is coming next? I think I might know. Oh, start the year right with parents. And I'm not getting too deep in this. And honestly, if this, if you're like cringing because you're like parents, I get it. I get it. Now, I will say that over the years of my teaching experience, I have had <laughs> some very tricky relationships. I've had students that came with, let's just say a lot of baggage and their parents um, came with the, the baggage as well. And um, maybe I will tell you that by the end of the school year, I can only think of one time that I didn't end up on a good place with a parent. So in all my years of education, and I started in 2004, there was only one parent that really just hated me. And I'm pretty sure she hated everybody, okay? Like it wasn't, I didn't take it personally because she hated everybody and um, I never got close with her, but that's like one. So, and I know that right now the atmosphere of parents are like, oh my gosh. But if you wanna learn more about starting it right with parents, I think I'm doing this with Dr. Desiree in September um, because I do believe that if we can make that relationship happen, not make it happen, but if we can, I guess, set the stage, you know, the soil, you know, grow that relationship, we could actually um, amplify how our students grow or, or help them learn at a just, just so much deeper. And I'm not even using my words very well right now, but there's just like, when you have that team mentality with parents and when they know that you're going to listen to them and that you actually care about their input, um, even when you have hard conversations with them, they're going to come to you. They're less likely to go over your head and complain to the principal about you, which some parents will do anyway, because that's how they do it. Um, but, but I think you can definitely have a good relationship with your parents, but you have to have boundaries and boundaries look different for everybody. I had all of my parents' numbers in my phone. And I still do, honestly, because I'm friends with most of them. But here's the reason. I didn't used to do that, but I had a student break their arm at recess. And um, I had to get a hold of that student. And I could not get a hold of their students, that student's parents right away, um, I, you know, because I didn't have their number in my phone. And I just remember thinking, because I have my own kids, you know, like I'd want to be notified immediately. And so that kind of just, I don't know, like that's the kind of teacher that I am. 
And I know that there are other people that are that way. Is that how you want to work it? No, I don't. I mean, like, it's up to you. Boundaries are personal. But I, I feel like if you put your boundaries in place before the year starts, you stick to those boundaries. Um, and, you know, there are apps so that you can have the parents numbers in your phone without them having your number. So I think Google does that. So what I'm saying is there are boundaries. And of course, spaces, you can message your parents. Right now, we can't message them through their phone. We can only message through email. So um, that is something that I hope to see change um, as we evolve. Um, but I think starting the year right with parents, you have to have those boundaries in place, whatever they are. And your boundaries and my boundaries are different, and that's okay. Um, I think that being inviting something that really worked with me was letting my parents know from the first week from when they dropped their kids off to my class. And of course I was in elementary. So, you know, you'd have to, uh, however you do this in secondary, I, I would be like, Hey, um, you know, and I would, I would take pictures and I celebrated all of that. Cause that's just how I was. Um, and I would also let parents know that if they ever wanted to come into my class and do a career talk, that I would love that. So I had, um, one, one of my favorites was when a parent came, she worked in a senior citizen home and, um, it was just like a retirement home. Um, and she came and talked to my kids, not just about her job, but the importance of learning from senior citizens. And then we had this whole project with it and it was, it came from parents and this parent was amazing. And she just stayed with us all year. Um, another parent, um, I had a, a Muslim um, mother come and she was big with Microsoft and I didn't know this about her. And I, I, I will never forget this because she, she had all of her, um, her clothing on and her dress. And I know I'm not saying it right, right now. Um, but she talked about how the, she did work with Microsoft. She talked about the degrees that she had. And I'm gonna tell you something, her son, she had a son in my class. I watched him glow while his mother talked about her life and her education. And of course, for me learning in the process, like you just like not labeling people, I had no idea about this about her. And that sparked some of the best conversations for the rest of the year. It gave um, the girls in my class, especially that were also Muslim, um, to see something that maybe they weren't being, um, that they hadn't seen. I don't know, but just, and it also just showed us not to judge people. I mean, there's just so many aspects of why it's amazing to have parents come. And if you're in secondary and this is something that you'd like to do, I think you can definitely implement that. Um, and then of course you can connect your parents to your class using that people feature that I, I showed previously. Um, so these are just three things to keep in mind. And then I think a letter, whether you actually copy this letter or um, you know, and send it out via paper or you just send it in a message through your spaces. I, I, I made a template for this because, you know, you reaching your parents, it may look differently for all of your parents. Some may like to be texted. Some might like emails. Some may like the paper. You just never know, right? So I did include this template and I it was very basic. Um, I just, and you can use my words and add on to my words, but I talked about, I'm so glad your child's in my class because that means you are also in my class. We may not see each other daily or even for as long as a school or for as long as school hours, but you are important. The success of your child growing and learning is relative to how we work together. And y'all, I truly believe that. I have seen children um, and students grow so much more than any other time in their school history in my class. And I'm not just saying that because I saw that parents told me. Um, because of that relationship. And I've had some very, very hard conversations with parents, but setting that in place at the beginning of the year allowed that groundwork, laying that groundwork, allowed those conversations to happen. And then I also let them know about coming and speaking. Um, and again, I put this template in here. You can send it through, you know, the messaging apps that you have, whether it's spaces or whatever. Um, but uh, like, th this is so important to me to have that family engagement. It's also um, and I just want to say this too, if you're working with some hard to love parents, a lot of times they're hard to love because they've been hurt, whether in their own school system journey, or maybe their kids have had a real struggle in school. Maybe they've been really misunderstood, um, or nobody's known how to work with their ADHD. Maybe they're very neurodivergent and no one has found a way um, to help their students really grow. Um, and so and we've all had these students, right? Um, sometimes what I did with the, the parents that really did not want to listen to me and believe me, you can tell by their demeanor, they're not ready to have, you, you know, they're just not, they're not in there. 
is just to listen. You know, sometimes it's not your place to really talk much at all at the very beginning until they can trust you, because there's a lot of things that we do in our school system that really tears down parents. And honestly, there's a lot of stuff in our school system that tears down teachers too. Like it's a, it's a war sometimes, but I mean, I've, I've seen like when I had first graders, um, my, my last year and the school that I used to work at, um, I was told about this parent. I was told so much about a parent before I ever met her. I could never get her on the phone. And her, her son had so many problems. Like I didn't know how to work with them. And I just wanted to talk with her and she would never call me back. And I didn't know she was getting my messages. The school counselor couldn't even get a hold of her. When we finally had like this come to Jesus meeting with a school counselor and myself, um, I listened. I did not say a word. I did not say a word. I let her talk. And then once she started talking and opening up, and then I just validated everything she said. And I realized that everything I had been told about this mother was basically a lie. Or it was, it was um, said with so much bias that this woman didn't even had a chance. And her son was in first grade. So he probably had pre-K and kinder. And that's it. He's in first grade. Coming to my class, this mother already has a reputation. And I did not... I, I completely thought everything I knew about this woman from other people was unfounded completely. I am still friends with her today. Her son did have some learning, like some challenges, but he's growing. He learned so much in my class. Once he came into my classroom the next day and he said, Mrs. McAllister, are you friends with my mom? And I mean, I completely lied. I don't know if she thought I was friends with her or not. I was like, yeah, I am. She's my friend. <laughs> and I like her. And that changed him. Like he, like, let's just say for most of the day, he was giving me grief. I mean, he destroyed my class at least three times by that point. And I mean, I had put so much care into my class. I'm pretty sure I blogged about this. Um, oh, I wrote, I, I did write about this in one of Rich, Rochelle Danae Poth's books, but he had destroyed my class at least three times. And I was so upset because at first I was just, I cared more about the things in my class than I did about him. Right. Um, that's, that was a learning curve for me. But once he figured out that I liked his mom, um, and I didn't really even know her, but I just said I liked her, right? He changed. Like, it just, he still gave me some grief, and he still had his challenges, but he respected me. And um, and I, I was able to really help and guide him, and he started learning. He didn't know how to read, and he started learning in that as well. And I just say that just, you know, parents are your team members, and and, and Aline, I see everything on social media, and I see that there are some parents that are just such freaking jerks. But again, you could say that there are some teachers that are jerks as well. Like we all, like we're in this together, you know, and we have to find a way to reconcile and work together because it's it's for our students. It's it's for their growth and um, for the betterment of, of, of their schooling. So I could rant about this all day long, um, but I just want to say that Spaces does allow for parent messaging. Um, it, you can actually connect parents to that class feed and their individual spaces so that they're always in the loop as long as, as much as you feel comfortable. That is an up to you thing. And um, I know that not everybody's on the same page about that, but this is something I feel strongly about. Even those hard to love parents, even those hard to love students, um, this is something that is super important to me. Um, before I move on, do you have any questions? No, we have one that we'll bring up at the end. Okay. And I think we're getting closer if I'm right. Yes. So, and I'm looking at my clock. Oh my gosh, this was perfect. So um, if, if you hit this QR code, that it's going to take you to a survey that I would love for you to fill out. And I'm actually going to pick a couple of people um, from it. I don't know, like, Maybe it's because you have the best answers. I really don't know how I'm going to pick them, but um, or I could get permission to send everybody a gift card. Um, if you fill out this, um, go to this QR code, I'll definitely pick at least three people. Oops. Um, I don't know. Wait, I don't. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I don't know what I hit, but go to this QR code. It just tells me maybe you um, want to keep the conversation going. Maybe there's something I didn't address that you'd like to know more. I'll actually be able to email you and um, talk about this with you if you would like. You don't have to take that survey if you don't want to. If this was enough for you, um, um, know that. Um, this is where you can stay up with me. Um, the Space or Not community, if you click on this, it's going to take you. I do manage that. 
and I love our online community. So um, if you just, if you go to that, this is my, obviously this is what it looks like on my end. Um, that doesn't make any sense. But so that's that's a link to our Space or Not community, but you can go to facebook.com slash group slash spaces edu. And I would love for you to join, um, follow our hashtags. My hashtag is the I'm sorry story. And then the hashtag of spaces is hashtag growth over grades. And that's our podcast. Um, and I would love for you to follow myself in spaces. And um, yeah, so that's basically it. Please um, fill out that survey if you like, and I'll pick at least three people to send some gift cards to Amazon to. Um, yeah, so ask me questions. And this was a pleasure. And Dr. Desiree, thank you so much for letting me come on here and do this. It's always a pleasure working with you, whether we're on a panel, whether I'm coming onto your platform. You're amazing, and I love you so much. Thank you so much. And you know the love is there. Um, okay, so we have a question about grading. How, how, or do you have any examples, I guess, or advice for how to grade students? using scoring rubrics and gray using IEPs? Okay. Um, I, I am not going to give a good answer for that. If this person would fill out this QR code and this is, and put that question in there, um, I will definitely give a thoughtful response to that. Um, I, I will say that for all of my kids that I homeschooled, I had an individual learning plan. So basically they had, they all had an IEP and all of the learning artifacts that I uploaded were usually along the learning plan that I had already established for them with the co-teacher. So I would say that um, that would be something that you could do when you're uploading learning artifacts is make sure that it's matching those IEPs. And that's something once they're uploaded, once you go to a parent conference, and this is another thing, when I would go to parent conferences, sometimes we're supposed to have 24 hours in advance, but it didn't always work like that. You know the reality of this thing. But here's something, if you have those artifacts just uploaded, whether they give you advance notice or not about a parent conference, you have all of that right there at your fingertips in the app uploaded for that individual student. Um, the rubrics part of it, um, that's not necessarily something that we have yet. I will say that we are coming out with proficiency scales in August, and actually we're going to have a back to school party in our Facebook community, so please come and join us. Um, but uh, we, we're going to do more about proficiency scales and, and things like that. So, um, yes. But any question that you have that I can't answer, put it, fill out this um, survey and I'll definitely get back with you. And that was all of the questions in the chat. If anyone wants to raise their hand, we would love to take any questions, comments. And please tweet me out. Um, I love it. It's probably a vanity thing. So like, I want to see that people actually cared about what I did, <laughs> but I will, I will send you a book, an autographed book. <laughs> Stormy Daniels, and thank you for being here. Tell me, what is your question? I just want to know if you'll come visit us in class and read us your book. <gasps> I would it's love to. Visit. Oh my gosh. I would love to. Where are you, Stormy? I'm in El Paso, Texas. Oh my gosh. I wish I could actually go there. It's like in the 50s here in Alaska. Um, I would love to have some hot weather right now. And I know you're like, but this is in the hundreds. I don't care. Like I, I lived in melt. Texas <laughs> for 20 years. Believe me, I miss the heat. Please, that is a great question. I would absolutely love to read the I'm Sorry story as an author visit, virtual author visit with your class. That's another good way to stay in touch with me. Um, I, I, have a, I have a presentation with it. I do a lesson plan with it. Um, so, and I have discussion questions. And all you have to do is reach out to me on Twitter. Awesome. I will be reaching out soon. Thank you. <laughs> Probably today. Thanks for coming. And Melody, can I ask if they don't have Twitter, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? Um, right. So um, you, this is really easy. At Melody at spacesedu.com. Melody at e, uh, spacesedu.com. So um, that's my uh, that's my work email. But if it has anything to do with spaces, that is the most organized email inbox I have. And I will, even if it's a personal question, my MJ McCallie writes. So this MJ McCallie writes right here, that's basically all of my, um, my social media, except for my YouTube. They wouldn't let me do it. It had to be Melody McAllister. But for my Twitter, for my Facebook, um, for my Instagram, it's all MJ McCallie writes. And my personal email is MJ McCallie writes at gmail.com, um, two L's. But honestly, my inbox, um, you would be horrified 
Doc, you would seriously be horrified at it. I've tried to organize it, but it's just too far gone. If you really want to get a hold of me, melody at spacesedu.com is the best email. I stay on top of that and I don't let it get out of hand. So I will see it. All right. Well, Melody, thank you so, so much for this webinar. I think it was the perfect, not only starting the school year using spaces, but just starting the school year, right? Like just things to think about before we start thinking about building those relationships much more than anything else. So, um, and then the added plus of using spaces to do all of these awesome things that you gave us. So thank you so much. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate that you had me here and um, it's been a privilege. It's, it's, it's just been so beautiful. I, I tell you what, by 4.30 this morning, Alaska time, I was just out of my bed. I was like, I got to get up. I'm just too excited about this. And so, so this was such a pleasure to do it and an honor. So thank you.